Alright, so another thing you can do with displacements is if you have multiple displacements, you can chain them together by sewing, uh, linking one displacement to another. Um, the reason you'd want to do this is, okay, I'm going to make a copy of this displacement. It's just like a block, so you can shift and drag to make a copy. If I don't uh, put these two displacements together, then the problem I run into is if I want to, uh, you know, make a seamless transition between them, I they don't technically, um, oops, I gotta raise lower. They don't uh, interact with one another. You can't. Um, you're gonna have these ugly um, gaps in between your displacements. So the way you fix that is you select the displacements that you'd like to connect. In this case, it's these two for me. Um, and then your displacements in face edit sheet, you hit this button right here that says so. And that will automatically connect two displacements to one another. But there's a few rules that you need to keep in mind in order to use so. Um, you cannot sew two displacements that have two different powers. For example, if I had uh, created a displacement that had a power of two and then tried to sew it to a displacement that had a power of three, it would not work. Another thing you have to do, have to make sure, is that the displacement that you are, um, let's see here, I'm going to try to do it again. The displacement that you are sewing it to it must touch an entire edge or half of the entire edge of the displacement. And what I mean is, um, let me create another displacement here. Displacement, create three. Okay, so if I try to sew this displacement and this displacement together, it will work because the edge of this displacement goes all along the edge of this displacement. So I can do displacement, so, and it works. However, if I do not have it um, all the way on the edge, if I um, decrease it a little bit, let's say, and then I try to sew one displacement to another, it won't work. But you can uh, sew one edge, and then if this is exactly half, of that one edge. I think the halfway mark is here. If one displacement is exactly half the edge of the other displacement, then the sew will also work. Um, these are just some rules that you have to keep in mind when you're sewing displacements together. Uh, if you don't keep these in mind, then you can get some really nasty um, holes and they look bad. Okay. I'm going to lower all these to, well, I'm just going to keep them where they are. For right now. You can also create mul multiple displacements out of one block by selecting as many faces that you, as you'd like to make some displacements. Hit displacement, create, three is fine, and it will create displacements on multiple faces at once. And these obviously will already come pre-sewn. Now, the reason why uh, this block a long time ago, um, we were creating it in vertex mode, is if I clipped a whole block, if I used the cutting tool here to cut the block and then made displacements, uh, for some reason, and I'll have to check out uh, why this is, um, it will not let you make multiple displacements like that. It's just going to select one of them, which is not what we want. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about... Um, Let's see, let's move these down. I'm going to talk about putting or making these displacements look like real ground using the uh, Paint Alpha channel. For those of you who work in Photoshop or other um, you know, image editing uh, stuff that is way beyond me, uh, you'll know what an alpha channel is, which is, I think, the, uh, the second, it's kind of an overlaid image on top of another image so you can get you can get one image and another image and you can kind of switch between them and a displacement like this with displacements you can also manipulate that alpha channel 
So if you selected a uh, if you selected a texture that had these kind of um, uh, half and half textures that I selected earlier, if it's got the name blend in it, then uh, you can blend from one texture to another texture. In this case, we've got rock and we've got grass. So hit the displacement once you've selected your displacement. Then hit paint alpha. And this looks pretty similar to the um, the paint geometry, except it's a little bit smaller here, and it's got similar tools. So raise, lower, raise to, and smooth. Except in this case, you're not really actually raising the um, the height or the uh, changing the uh, the geometry of your of your displacement, but you're actually changing the data that's in the um, in the displacement's texture. So if I do raise lower, 25 is fine. You can make your brush larger or smaller, um, and then hit uh, start um, using your mouse, your left mouse button, to paint on the grass. And you can see how it kind of seamlessly goes from ground to grass. And this is how uh, Team Fortress 2 handles and other Valve games handle uh, the smooth transition between um, two different textures. So it kind of looks a lot more interesting than just a repeating ground texture right here. You'll notice if you have only one displacement um, selected like I did, and you try to paint, oops, that's paint geometry, if you try to paint the alpha or the geometry without selecting the other displacement, then the effect will not leak onto the other displacement. So you should be careful and try to manipulate uh, all of your displacements, or all adjacent displacements at least, at one time so they don't look, uh, they don't look unnatural. So there's my ground. Uh, it's perfectly safe to have the ground kind of intersecting with um, our real ground. And uh, let's see here. Let's put texture on that. Okay. Paint that up a little bit. Um, oh yeah, you can. I should also type this. If you want to start with um, the grass, for example, instead of the uh, the ground here, you can just hit invert alpha on your face edit sheet. And that will change all of the ground areas to grass and all the grass areas to ground. For example, if I did it over here, then we get a perfect inversion of what we originally had. Um, destroy will convert your um, convert your displacement back into the block that it started with. So I can hit destroy and now we have, uh, oops, it's kind of in there. We have the block. And other features that you can do. Noise, uh, I've already covered so. So noise will um, will automatically generate little, um, little uh, peaks and troughs for you on your displacement. If, for example, I had a flat displacement. Let's try this real quick before I run out of time again. Make a displacement. And I just wanted some insta um, insta ground lead looking kind of thing. Then I can hit noise, type in a minimum value. It's going to be negative five. The maximum value five. Hit OK, and then we'll automatically make uh, it'll automatically randomly generate peaks and troughs. So it kind of looks you know not like a flat ground. It'll look a little bit um, more realistic with some uh, some some variance in your displacement. Okay, so that's it for displacements. Uh, you know, maybe I'll run this. There we go. It'll look kind of goofy because your uh, this ground is still what the ground is. But once you get all of your map covered with displacements, you can hit the no draw on all of this, and then you won't see the ground that's separating you from this void out here. You'll just see your displacements and. Uh, I'm a driver. I'm a winner. Thanks are gonna change, I can feel it.